We begin today with the historic changes still shaping the landscape in New Jersey politics, the end of the party line, perhaps for the June primary uh, and into the future. Who knows? Uh, we're hoping Micah Rasmussen of the Rebovich Institute <laughs> for New Jersey Politics at Ryder <laughs> University might have some insight to share. Professor, good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, David. Don't put this all on me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you almost have to check every morning uh, to see what's changing. Uh, as this week ends, what can you tell us about where we are? It looks like clerks are dropping off the appeal like kids picking uh, peas off their mashed potatoes. <laughs> what else is going on? So the Democrats appear to have an office block ballot for the 2024 primary. Uh, draws happened yesterday um, to see who is in what order. The GOP is not quite there yet, except in Burlington County, where the clerk is giving them one anyway. Um, and it may not feel like if you're inside the bubble of New Jersey politics that we are un undergoing massive changes, but we are really living through some of the biggest political changes in New Jersey in the last 60 or even 75 years. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned someone's also trying to make the case that the ruling should apply to the Republican uh, primary as well. Where does that stand? Does that have to go to court too? Yeah, I, I think it probably will go to court in Burlington County again because the judge felt, Judge Kawashi felt like he could not authorize um, the change in the Republican ballot because none of the people seeking relief were Republican candidates. So he left them out of it for now. Clearly, they're going to be part of the larger decision and the larger case when we get past this injunction. Right. But uh, for the moment, it doesn't involve the Republicans. What's probably going to bring us back to court sooner than that is that uh, Burlington County clerk has decided that uh, she's going to do an office block ballot anyway, which is not the relief that the uh, Republicans were seeking. And there are Republican candidates like Curtis Bashaw who feel like they're going to be hurt by that decision. And so they are not happy about that. Yeah, we're going to get to those in a minute. Uh, you also mentioned drawings for ballot positions. Uh, does this affect any of that? I mean, we never paid much attention to this, uh, really, because we always knew who had the line, right? Right. And so now we're going to look for things like ballot order, which somebody's always got to be first. Right. So you do it by uh, by a drawing because everybody's got an equal chance. That's the standard that the judge set. We're going to be looking at things like slogans to see if that ma that matters. Uh, yeah. This really is not about the high information voters who know a lot about the candidates. This is about primary voters who maybe don't know so much and are looking for clues that they're not going to find anymore in the line. Let me get a panel question in here. Charlie, you had a good uh, question for Micah. Yes, good morning. Uh, I find it very difficult to believe that these party leaders are just going to surrender this power, this enormous power that they have willingly without a fight. So I'm just wondering, how do you think that they're going to adapt to this new reality, this new office block in, in a way that they can still assert their power and, and wield it? Well, here, I'm going to give you two answers, Charlie. One is that they should realize that they've got to now run aggressive campaigns. They've got to educate voters. They've got to um, rebuild their ground game. They've got to rebuild their get out the vote operation. All those things that they didn't do because they had the shortcut of the line over the years, they now need to put their efforts into rebuilding that. Uh, I said that's what they should do, because I think what they're going to do, you're right, is they're going to attempt some sort of a legislative fix that will try to thread the needle of satisfying the judge. Um, the problem is that short of replacing the lines entirely, the problem I see is that the judge was pretty prescriptive, at least for this year. He was pretty specific about the office block ballot, and I don't know what he'll take short of a full office block ballot. I don't know if that's going to get off the ground. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at some of these races. We, pro we profiled uh, Menendez and Bala in Hudson County on the show earlier this week. Uh, that's the 8th Congressional District incumbent Rob Menendez, Hoboken Mayor Ravi Bala. Uh, this is a reset for this race, you said. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the word that, that we're all using, because it's not to say that Menendez is down and out, not by a long shot. He's the incumbent. He's got all the advantages of incumbency and maybe some of the disadvantages that come with having your dad's name at this point. But yeah. what he doesn't have is the advantage of the line at this point, the advantage of the organization. Before he had that, before he rebuilt that bridge when he was struggling uh, because he was sort of flailing because his father was troubles, we said he was in trouble. 
He solidified that. He got himself out from under that by getting the support of the party. The question is, how much does the support of the party mean without the line? And that's what we're going to find out. Bala certainly has the chance to make the case for himself just like Menendez does now. He's a well-funded challenger. He's got more money raised than any first-time candidate has ever raised for the House before in New Jersey. So he's certainly going to make the same case that Menendez is making. Do we also have a reset in the third uh, congressional district? That's um, uh, Herb Conway and, and Carol Murphy in the Democratic primary there. Winner likely succeeds Andy Kim uh, into Congress. Is that a reset also? I think it is. Herb Conaway had... Um, probably next to Tammy Murphy's departure, may have lost more than any other candidate from this decision, even though she came out in anticipation of the decision. Conaway had amassed all of the lines in, in Burlington, in Monmouth, and in Mercer. And so he had what we thought was a decisive advantage. He still got, again, the support of the organizations. He still got their footwork, their ground game. He still got their endorsement. He still got the money, if that matters, uh, which it certainly does. But what he doesn't have is their line. And so now Carol Murphy gets the chance to make the same kind of a case, run a better campaign if she can do that, which she and her husband have certainly shown a propensity more than probably anybody else to put together strong campaigns in this state. He's one of the state's most respected Democratic campaign uh, uh, officials. And so he, she gets the chance to make the case same as him now. Talking about whether the ruling applies to Republicans, that could have a big impact on the U.S. Senate uh, primary on the Republican side, you got hotel guy Curtis Bashaw and, and Mayor Christine uh, Glasner, uh, election denier, um, up against one another. Uh, we talked about this earlier in the week, how this kind of frees up uh, uh, the mayor to just kind of appeal to the to the rabid base, no? Exactly. It, this is this is the kind of change that we're going to see now in New Jersey primaries is she can make the case and, you know, <laughs> not as inside observers would say, of course, people can make the case directly to primary voters now. But that is now the case. She can now get out there and appeal to movement conservatives, Trump conservatives, people that she feels like she has a, uh, a kinship with. And she um, probably has the chance to do that now, the same as Curtis Bashaw does. He had amassed 14 lines. She had seven. Hers were concentrated in the northern part of the state. He had all of the rest of the state. That was thought to be a decisive organizational advantage. Now he's got a, well, I'm sorry, it was looking for a second like he wasn't going to have those. Then it was clear he gets to keep them. And so now he gets to keep that advantage. And that would have been potentially the big opening for her, I think, if those Republican lines had disappeared too. And still to be determined, right? Because as we said earlier, this is something that uh, could end up having to go to court, no? More to come, yeah. Yeah. All right, Michael Rasmussen of the Rebovich Institute at Ryder. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, David.